what is a raw file? Well, a raw file format are basically made up of little ones and zeros. Think about it this way. A JPEG is made up of little pixels that are pre-assigned shades of color that are made up of red, green, and blue. However, when it comes to raw files, they're ones and zeros. There is no pixel information at this point. So let me give you an example. If I take this image and I drop it into Photoshop as a JPEG, then this image simply is what it is. If I were to zoom in on this image, you can clearly see how it's made up of different shades of color for each little pixel that makes up this actual image. However, if I take this exact same image as a raw, now something completely different happens. I can now drag and drop the actual raw file and it opens up what's called Camera Raw. This is Photoshop's built-in raw processor. In this case, if I zoom in, you can still see pixels that are used to create this image. Now at this point, Photoshop is using pixels to display the image to us, but that is not an actual limitation to the file because any manipulation that we do is not damaging to these actual pixels because they haven't been created yet. What that means is with this JPEG, if I was to make any color corrections to this, I am physically damaging pixels. I am moving pixels around. I'm altering the color, and that is a permanent change. However, anything that I do inside of Camera Raw at this point is simply little ones and zeros that are getting different values. And it isn't until I tell it that I actually want a pixel-based image that it actually creates the pixels for us to view, which all you really need to know is it's giving itself a wide range of colors to choose from. Simply as an example, 8-bit gives it 256 shades of gray per red, green, and blue channels. When you go up to 16-bit, red is now using 65,000 shades of gray. Blue is using 65,000 shades of gray. And green is using 65,000 shades of gray. Okay, So it's able to handle smooth gradients much better than an 8-bit image. With all that said, all you really need to know is that Adobe's Camera Raw is displaying many thousands of colors on your monitor. The other thing to know about raw processing inside of Adobe's Camera Raw is that it's displaying things as ProPhoto. ProPhoto is a color profile similar to sRGB and Adobe RGB, which you may have heard of. ProPhoto actually has more colors at its disposal than either of the previous two. Let me give you an example. What this shows you is that all this color shown here is the visible space that humans can see. You have this orange yellow line in here that represents sRGB. Now sRGB is what comes out of many cameras, it's what's on television, projectors, monitors, everybody's using sRGB. However, it's actually a limited color space. When you go up to Adobe RGB, you can actually get more colors visible on the device. So if you print something out on your printer, many printers today handle a majority of the Adobe RGB color space. So what that means is when you print something out on a printer, it handles sRGB. If you print out Adobe RGB, some colors are there, some colors may not be there. But when you get up into Pro Photo, you can see that this thing actually hangs outside of the visible spectrum, theoretically anyway. So what that means is it can handle so many more colors than anything that Adobe RGB or sRGB can even begin to display. But here's the thing. Your monitor probably can't handle anything more than sRGB unless you have a professional monitor, which starts heading up into the Adobe RGB color space. And there's nothing on the market that can actually handle the Pro Photo. So the question comes, well, why do you need Pro Photo as opposed to Adobe RGB or sRGB? It, it's simply a way that the computer can handle the most amount of colors without damaging the image. So if you work in 16-bit with ProPhoto, that is going to give you the cleanest looking image with the widest range of colors. And that is why Camera Raw and Lightroom are both displaying images on your screen as ProPhoto. It simply gives it the widest range of colors to choose from to display to you, even though in theory, not all colors are displayed. And one last thing that I would have to say to you about Camera Raw is that the cameras themselves are using 
12 bit or 14 bit depending on the camera however when a camera saves it as a jpeg it's removing all the extra shades of gray and bringing it down to an 8 bit image so if you think about it this way if it saves a jpeg as an 8 bit image and camera raw is that natively working in 12 or 14 depending on the camera when photoshop itself starts working with a 16 bit image it just has more shades of gray to choose from when it begins working going from 12 to 16 is a much smaller jump than 8 to 16 is and while i'm on this particular topic i'm going to show you this image right here which is currently a 16 bit image so this is the shades of gray that get displayed within Photoshop. It is a nice, smooth gradient. However, if I was to duplicate this image, and this one, I change it from 16-bit to 8-bit, visually it looks the same to you here. However, if I was to zoom in, you should now be able to see bands of gray. However, this is simply to show you what happens within 8-bit images as opposed to 16-bit images. And overall, this entire section was simply to show you about what happens inside of this little blue area below the image inside of Camera Raw. If I click on this, you can see here that these are saving settings, meaning once I leave Camera Raw and I go into Photoshop, it's going to save it with Adobe RGB and 16 bits per channel. I have the option of changing it to Pro Photo or sRGB, and I have the option of changing it from 16 bits or 8 bits. It's at this point that you change the settings to show how you want to work in the photos going forward once you leave the RAW processor. But we'll be talking about that a lot more in a later video.